Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. Today we're gonna take a look at the bullet train or as it is known in Japanese Shinkansen. So let's look at what and when. So it's world's first high-speed railway network. What does that mean? Every country at that time that was first world country and Euro uh, European countries, American countries, they were building high speed train. Only difference was is they invested a lot of money into making network as in railway tracks that are dedicated for high speed. So they did not have any freight train going to it. So that's why they are called world's first high speed railway network. This was their unipa. And this was done after World War II. In World War II, they suffered a very heavy defeat and uh, they had to rebuild. So at that time, they played a gamble and the gamble was like, because the uh, road networks were destroyed and uh, cars and all that is very expensive, not affordable by masses, they're gonna build a high-speed rail network to connect uh, suburban parts to Tokyo. Basically, uh, they want to make sure everybody can access places that are far away quickly. So after world war ii they started to invest in it with some hiccups and they got it working at uh, olympic of 1964 tokyo olympic they opened the inauguration happened and the train service was open to the public and it was quite successful and as you can see there were many generations of uh, bullet trains so question comes to the mind why a country that was war destroyed like they literally have lost everything and you know they invested so much for you know a train network a high speed train network so they did it for two simple reasons one simple reason was economical obviously they knew that investing in something like this which allows a large amount of people to be connected it's a recipe for economic growth so they did it and second was their country just suffered a very severe defeat so they needed to build national pride now many people don't actually grasp the concept of national pride and it's a uh, understandable it's not taught in school the reason is that if you don't have national pride your students if they go abroad for study they will not come back and as an indian most of us are very familiar with that aspect this is why you need national national pride and japanese people were going to abroad uh, for studies so they had to make sure they come back so national investing in national pride is uh, like you know investing in the future and so far they generally on average uh, save and uh, add to economy roughly 4.5 billion dollar a year so i would say they were quite successful so we know if they are successful then how the heck they became successful first you have to understand they did not cut any corners the r d department of Xinjiang network is the uh, most expensive thing there is r d wise in terms of train like the amount of money they poured in they make space program look cheap and it's uh, the recent uh, polls suggest that it's roughly two billion dollars so they're not cutting corners the r d it goes very quickly and you have to understand the Xinjiang network has a lot of train stops it's not like European networks where you know train picks up and like there is nothing for 100 kilometer no it's almost like an Indian railway scenario where it's like train starts stop 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 so to compensate for that they, in, uh, they initiated something known as all wheel drive basically every wheel that you see in the train is connected to a motor yes all of the wheel are driving the train basically a uh, lower version of this is uh, what in india we have is called emu and almost every country has this this is where you, you need start and stop a lot you need acceleration so for that reason you have emus where you have uh, engine in the front engine in the back engine in the center they just simply took that and like they boosted it they're like every single wheel has its own basically motor and this allows them incredible acceleration now trains take a very long time to get up to the speed so like for uh, on average you can easily comfortably assume that 0 to 100 km per hour could take upwards of 8 to 10 minutes Xinxian can do that in seconds they don't do it in seconds because you know people will push back in their seat but they can do it and they uh, instead of 10 minutes they are in one minute so this saves a lot of time so that's why their average speed 
is very high because even though they are stopping more frequently than any high speed train network they are picking up very quickly so that was their acceleration secret to acceleration and you have to understand there is no level crossing in uh, Xinjiang railway network now I am showing a picture of it here but that's the only crossing there is and it's for factory line basically when train needs to go for maintenance that's the only place where it has level crossing level crossing is a basically the recipe for disaster if anything gets stuck your train is very expensive and if it goes through any metal object like a bike or anything like that you have to apply emergency brake to check like you know is any motor damage or things like that so avoiding it is as much as possible is a very good idea and uh, it also saves life like uh, in india roughly 12000 people die on railway crossings so suffice to say and they also use what's called swing nose crossing and I am showing this image. Most of you are familiar with this sort of rail crossing. However, when wheel is going through one to or, uh, or another track, the, you can see there is a giant gap. The wheel goes in the gap, turn, and it goes to another rail. Now, this is uh, well, as you can see, its wheels have load as high as 20 tons, and uh, generally, even the light railway will have roughly around 10 ton weight on the point where wheel is contacting the rails. So that going unsupported is very well dangerous. It, it damages the wheel because now it's getting hitting a point very sharply. So not only that, it's uh, it does not even support high speed. Your train is gonna derail if you do that. It's high speed. So what Shinkansen did is basically what's called swing nose. That also, so there is no gap. So these trains can take turns at very high speed even on crossing. So all those things can combined allows Xinjiang to have the reputation it has it has it's very punctual it's uh, very safe and it's very fast all of these things work to it so if they find a security flaw they quickly fix it they will not go to board meeting and all that that will be fixed instantaneously and if they had a train derailment recently and they are like okay they put a latch on uh, bottom of the these bogies that will latch on to the tracks in order to prevent it from you know derailing like you know be, uh, falling over so they put a lot of r d money which cannot be understated to make sure the they get their share so in recent years the, uh, the india was trying to get into the high speed railway network and uh, uh, narendra modi has uh, inaugurated like basically now we we are a go we're getting bullet train surprising amount of people are against it and I have no idea why so here are some reasons only some reasons that I'm gonna give you that why India also needs bullet train I'm like ideally we would have built our own but that would take way too long so time is a time of being of the essence we have to be you know careful about time so train in India is always seen as a last resort of travel like if you're poor or oh, you travel by train oh like you know uh, let's say I, I come to my own hometown here's the deal there is only railway connection here there is no airport connection so I come to the nearest airport and then travel to buy train because train is seen as a last resort and all of you agree like if you had the money and if you had the airport connection none of you will travel by train and uh, you have to understand from Indian railways perspective passenger is always a low profit or sometimes flat out uh, money sinking ground for railway railway makes most of its income from freight basically uh, carrying goods and luggages and the recent uh, rise of Indian uh, cheap uh, cheap airlines like uh, Indiegogo and there are a lot of competition in this cheap airlines they made it uh, they starting to you know take away the revenue that the railway was getting now this thing you have to understand very carefully that railway does not make that much money if you know all the train is general classes they are not gonna make that much at best case scenario they will have enough money to you know uh, slowly repair something before it you know destroys uh, gets it they will not have enough money to buy new products so they make the lot of their money from premium trains like Duranto, Rajdhani and basically very expensive trains so but the reason is nobody want to go into expensive trains because they are slow like Duranto does not have 100% occupancy because because the train is going from one place to another like let's say Bangalore to Calcutta you can take an aircraft there and it will save you significant amount of time and trains are painful like if you stuck inside a train for 18 hours 36 hours 40 hours it's painful so need of speed is very compulsory so and uh, our Indian railway has very bad average speed like 
even Shatabdi's and Rajdhani barely max out at 90. And so, yes, some tracks exist where they're like, you know, such this small distance they have like, you know, 130 and things like that. But as a whole, Indian passenger service are idiotically slow. So we need something. Otherwise, every people who can afford, they can pay uh, railway simply won't pay. And slowly and surely, railway will lose money. And uh, we always look at our railway as a national embarrassment. Like nobody talks about Indian railway in good sense. Like uh, recently I made an episode on ISRO as it's a national pride. This is opposite of that. This is an embarrassment. Like uh, our trains are not looked at we are way behind schedule like everybody did a high speed railway by now and we are still like you know uh, india is poor india is poor i'm like what the, you will become more poor if you don't fix this problem so these are my reasons why india needs bullet train so that was my presentation i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you didn't dislike leave a comment and subscribe i make video every day thanks for watching